Hi everybody, very welcome to Mentor and yet another video podcast. As always, I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. Today on the video, guys, we're going to be talking about the aircraft doors on the 737-800. Why are there so many of them? And could you open an aircraft door while you're in flight? Stay tuned. 31016, This video is brought to you in cooperation with Brilliant.org. Now, if you are like me and you need to brush up on your physics skills and especially your mathematics skills from now and then, well then, Brilliant is the perfect tools to do so. They will do it in a fun and interactive way. And if you use this link here below, you'll get a whopping 20% off the annual fee of Brilliant, but it's completely free to go and check them out. So do it. Right guys, so the doors and the emergency exits on the 737-800. I'm sure that you, just like me, have read in the press or heard some, something maybe on the news about some drunken passenger flying somewhere who's been getting up and suddenly trying to open the aircraft doors. Could they actually do that? And if they can't, why is that? Well, first of all, we're going to start about talking about the different doors that you have on the 737. So, you have, when you enter the aircraft, you have the entry door on the left-hand side of the aircraft. I did a video about why we always uh, board from the left. You can check that out later on. Uh, so the entry door is on the left side. And opposite to that, you have a, an equal, exactly identical door, which we call a forward service door. And we call it like that because that's where we service the aircraft. That's where, for example, uh, catering would come in to our galleys and also where we can take in wheelchair passengers if needed. So those are the two um, doors in the front. You have the identical set of doors in the back of the aircraft, which is an entry door on the left side and a service door on the right. Okay. Over the wings, there are four emergency exits. Uh, those are a little bit smaller and they work in a slightly different way. We'll get into that in a second. Uh, in the, for the cargo compartments, uh, there are two doors as well, one in the back of the aircraft, one in the front, and they are on the 737 folded inwards. All right. So they're closed, and then if you open them, they fold inwards, which is a little bit weird. Uh, it's not the most efficient way of utilizing cargo space, but this has to do with the fact that the 737 is still a 60s designed aircraft, right? They didn't think really about that. If you look at a similar aircraft now, like the Airbus 320, for example, you'll see that those doors, when they open them, they open outwards, which means that they can utilize the full space below to carry cargo. Um, there are some other small doors as well. There are two doors under the aircraft where you can access uh, the E&E bay, the electrical equipment of the aircraft, um, which are only used for maintenance purposes. And then in the cockpit, there are two slidable windows, which we, the captain and first officer, can use as emergency exits in case we can't get out through the normal doors. So why is it that we have so many doors then? Well, when an aircraft is being designed and then being certified, the aircraft manufacturer needs to show that an aircraft can be evacuated in 90 seconds using only half of the available emergency exits. So the more passengers you have on board, well, the more emergency exits you need to have. And those needs to be tested to be randomly blocked for whatever reason during the certification trials. I'm sure that you might have seen videos about this where uh, they, the aircraft manufacturers take off people, basically volunteers off the street. They fill up an aircraft completely. They put some professional cabin crews in. And then those cabin crew will have to be able to evacuate the aircraft in 90 seconds with these untrained passengers and half of the available exits will be blocked randomly. All right. If the aircraft can do that, if you can show to do that, well, then it is considered safe from that perspective. So this means that the 800, which can carry 189 paying passengers, uh, they need to have eight emergency doors. If there would be more passengers than that, then they would have to have extra doors. And this is what's happening on the 737 MAX 200, which is the biggest version of the 737 MAX. Uh, it can carry, as the name suggests, 200 passengers. And on that one, they've actually had to, um, to put another emergency exit in, which is going to be on the right side of the aircraft behind the wing. And they also need to put a cabin crew there that can be uh, helping and directing passengers out in the case of an emergency. 
So how do the doors work then? Well, the forward and aft entry and service doors, they are what we call a plug-in type of door. This means that when we open them, you have to kind of turn the door inwards a little bit first, and then it is brought outwards. And the way that it is, it, it's formed is kind of like a wedge. So this means that when we close the door and we put it into place, there will first of all be a couple of mechanical locks that will kind of hold it in place. But since it is made like a wedge, it means that when we start pressurizing the aircraft, which I talked about in last week's video, which you should have checked out if you haven't already, well then the differential pressure, as in the, the pressure difference between the inside of the aircraft and the outside of the aircraft, will push those wedges out and help seal the doors and keep them in place. And the differential pressure when we're up at cruising altitude can be up to, you know, seven, eight PSI. So that's an enormous amount of pressure that is now holding these doors in place. So this means that when we're airborne, since the aircraft starts pressurizing from when we set takeoff thrust until after we've landed, these doors cannot be moved. It doesn't matter how much you start pulling on that handle, it doesn't matter how strong you are, you will not be able to overcome the pressure difference that is holding these doors in place. So there's no electrical locks to these doors. Now, those of you who's thinking now would probably say, well, what about what happens in case of uh, depressurization then? Well, the fact is that these doors, they can actually be opened then. Potentially, theoretically, the doors could be open if the aircraft was completely unpressurized. But you also have to realize that these doors are opened towards the front. So this means that even though you could potentially open, as in just crack them a little bit open, the second you try to actually get an opening big enough to squeeze yourself out, you will be facing the airstream of the aircraft and the airstream would obviously keep that door closed as well. So even though you in theory could open the service doors and the entry doors after depressurization, in reality not so much. Right? Not big, not more than maybe a couple of centimeters open, decimeter or so. Okay? Well, what about the, uh, the overwing exits then? Well, the overwing exits are different. They are built spring-loaded to be able to open quickly. So if a passenger grabs one of those red handles inside of the, uh, the, the covers, pull that down, the door will automatically open up and quite quickly. All right? So this means that these are not plug-in doors. These doors need to be kept in place by mechanical locks. And obviously, we have. Those are DC operated, as in direct current operated, electrical locks, so they are operative even if we lose uh, the, uh, the generators. And the way that they work is that they need a couple of criteria to work. Okay, You need to have one, at least one engine working, you need to have three out of the four uh, main doors closed, and you need to have the aircraft sensing that's in the air using the weight on wheel switch. Now the weight on wheel switch is another system that is work, used for a lot of different systems. But basically there's a switch on the landing gear that feels that once the landing gear is extended, as in when we leave the ground and the, the, um, the landing gear feels that it's no longer attached to the ground, well then these weight on wheel switches will release and it will send a message into the aircraft computer saying that, okay, the, um, the aircraft is airborne and that will start initiating all kinds of different systems. And one of these systems are the overwing exits. And that is also connected to the thrust, the thrust level position. So when the, um, when the aircraft feel, or the PSEU unit, the proximity switch electronic unit, <laughs> feels that we have put thrust on for takeoff, and then the weight and wheel switch says that we're airborne, and all of these other conditions are in at the same time, then these locks will engage. So you would say that this sounds a little bit complicated, and it is. The thing is, though, that we need to have a system that is foolproof. We need to have a system that guarantees that these doors are closed whenever the aircraft is airborne. But also, it cannot be so complicated that they don't open in case we would, for example, do an emergency landing out on, on a field somewhere or in the, uh, in the water. All right? So we need to have a system that makes sure that the doors can be opened in case of an emergency, but also make sure that no one can open them in flight. Right? Perfect. 
So that's the way that these doors um, are operated and worked. Um, if we would need to evacuate the aircraft, well then the doors that are over the wings, uh, they will be open outwards quickly. In the front doors, that's in the doors that are uh, situated towards the front of the aircraft, there are some uh, straps that the first person ideally who is evacuating will take that strap with him or her and click to that little yellow buckle that you might have seen out on the wing. That's just to give something to hold on to for the passengers that are evacuating afterwards. Um, you, if you're sitting by an emergency exit, you will probably have already gotten a little briefing before departure about what to do and also been told to kind of study the uh, evacuation card more carefully. So it is really important that you do that because if worse comes to worse and you have to evacuate, well then the cabin crew will be relying on you to do these things. So make sure that you do study this evacuation card if you're sitting in those positions. Then when you're evacuating over the wings, we will always, as part of our evacuation procedure, which by the way, I also have a link to, we will set the flaps to 40. And we do that in order to make sure that there is something to slide down on. So you're actually using the flaps on the 737-800 to slide down to the ground and then run away from the aircraft in case of an evacuation. In the front and the back, so for the service doors and the entry doors, we have um, slides. Because you're quite high up, you need to have an emergency evacuation slide that you can jump onto and run away from the aircraft. And the way that these are being activated uh, is that once the aircraft is closed and we're ready to go, the cabin crew will bend down and they will uh, put a couple of girt bars that are connected to the slides into two holders on each door. Right? You probably heard the call armed and cross-checked or a vari variation of that. Well, that is because the cabin crew will arm their respective doors and then they will look over to make sure that their colleagues have done it right, to make sure that this is properly armed because it is crucial that the um, that emergency exit lights work properly in case we have to evacuate, okay? As part of doing this, and we, the pilots are actually trained to do this as well, when the cabin crew um, arms the slides, they will also go up and they will take the strap and put it over the... Um, the window, the little window. So you might have seen, well, next time you fly, you will definitely see that little strap. On Airbus models, there's a, little, um, there's a little indicator instead. But what that strap actually is, is an indicator to the fireman in case there would be an evacuation needed or in case there would be an emergency, we would land and there would be the uh, fire and rescue department would come towards the aircraft and want to enter they would have to check through that window first. And if they see that that strap is still attached, they know that inside of this door, if they open it, it's likely that the slide will explode. And it will explode, right? It is very violent. It takes less than 10 seconds to completely inflate the slide when the, um, the door is opened. So if you're a fireman and you're standing outside and you open that door, that slide might just blow up in your face and push you away. Very, very dangerous. And this is the reason for that little strap. I've done a video about that previously as well. But if you're wondering about it, that's why it's there. All right? These slides primarily are used just to evacuate the aircraft. Uh, they can be used as a, an inf like a, a floating device. They're not dinghies. Like they're not certified to be used as uh, rescue dinghies, but they can be used if we were to, um, to land in water, if we had to ditch, then they can be detached from the aircraft and used as a um, uh, floating device to help as much people as possible. They look exactly the same in the front and in the back. The only difference is that if we were to land in water, if we were to, to ditch the aircraft, we're not allowed to open the back doors. In that case, the aircraft is most likely going to be partly submerged in, in the back part of the aircraft. So the only emergency exits that we can use then are the ones of the wings and the ones in the front. So that will be the, the difference of evacuating on the ground as to evacuating in the water, All right? Good. Now, other things that are coming in, you know, when people are talking about evacuations are, for example, why we need to have the window blinds open and why we have to dim the lights. And I've talked about this in different videos as well, but I might as well talk a little bit more about it here. So the reason that the window blinds are open is for the cabin crew to be able to look outside and for you to be able to look outside in case there will be a, um, 
reject a takeoff or an emergency landing or some kind of emergency, you'll be able to scope what's happening outside of the aircraft. If there's fire, for example, you know about it and you wouldn't evacuate towards that side. Um, and also, just to give you a little bit more situational awareness, what's going on. So you have to have the window blinds open during takeoff and landing. Similarly, we want the light to be dimmed or off during takeoff and landing so that your eyes is kind of set to the outside conditions. Because if you would have to evacuate, and that will happen very, very quickly, like, like I said, it needs to be done in 90 seconds. Well then, if you're going from a fully bright cabin out into dark night, it would be like a black hole effect. You would jump out and you wouldn't see anything for the first couple of seconds. And the way that we react as humans, if we go out into something we don't see, is we stop. We, let, we stop in order to adjust our eyes, and that will severely slow down the evacuation, especially at the overwing exits. So this is why the window blinds have to be open. This is also why we have to, um, have to have the light dimmed for takeoff and landing, in short. So that's it, guys. That's what I had about the doors. I hope you, you enjoyed that. Keep sending in your questions about what you want me to talk more about, right? I love getting those kind of suggestions. And also, I want to send a huge thank you to the sponsor of this episode, which is Brilliant.org. Now, you guys, if you are like me, you really need to kind of keep the brain juices flowing. And Brilliant is an excellent tool to do exactly that. They have over 50 different interactive courses that you can go in and use. They also have a full catalog of mathematical courses where you can kind of start reviewing from the beginning, like the basic fundamentals of mathematics, all the way up to quite advanced stuff. And they will help you through you know, interactive storytelling and stuff to understand what it is that you're studying. So basically, they will make it fun and interactive to do it. Uh, courses that I think that you guys will enjoy is, uh, for example, the logic courses, uh, where you can start you know, trying to figure out in what order things need to be made in order for a certain sequence to happen. It's really, really good fun, actually. And those of you who use this, this link here below will get a whopping 20% off the fee, the annual fee of Brilliant. And I highly recommend you to go and check them out. Let me know what you think about them. I love getting feedback about the sponsors. That's it, guys. I also want to take this opportunity to tell you that uh, we are constantly working on new features in the Mentor Aviation app. Now, if you haven't downloaded, shame on you. You should have downloaded it by now. It's completely free to do so. There are links down here in the description to the download. And from next week, there will be a news feature, which means that you can go in and you can follow what's happening in the airline business with one click of a button, right? Without getting these annoying um, emails from different email lists, you can just go in, see if something interesting has happened, and you'll be able to both see a short version of the articles and also access the full articles with nice pictures and everything from the push notifications that the app will send you. So get the Mentor Aviation app, come in there, talk to me, other aviation enthusiasts, people who are afraid of flying, everyone are welcome. Have an absolutely fantastic day wherever you are and I'll see you next time. Bye bye. Right guys, I really hope that you liked that. If you want more content like that, more aviation content, well then check this out. Uh, I hope that you have subscribed to the channel and that you've highlighted the little notification bell. See you inside of the Mentor Aviation app and have an absolutely fantastic day. Bye-bye.